Um, so nonverbal communication really, you know, if we start with a, with a brief definition of it is, is the process by which we communicate or transmit messages or transmit meaning uh, between each other without using words. So it's every possible method or methodology that exists that messages are transmitted without words. Now, there's a lot of different, so that's a lot of domains, and, and that can be a lot of different things that, that uh, we could cover. Um, researchers have thought about it in various different ways. Um, different researchers classify or categorize different domains of nonverbal communication differently. I, I categorize four different domains of nonverbal communication. So let me just tell you a little bit about what that, those are. The first domain uh, of, of nonverbal communication is the environment. So the environment in which we are in, which includes the spaces that we're in, the rooms that we're in, um, how the seating is made, and, and everything around us in the context transmits a message to us about how we should behave or what kind of expectations we should are, exist on our, about our behavior. So for example, I was thinking about how to give an example of this, you know, without, without showing you slides or without showing you some videos. So one thing I thought I'd try to do is just ask your side to turn off the lights. So could you turn off the lights for a second? Now, just imagine that you're in a situation like this, where you're in a situation like this. What does this situation tell you about how you should behave? You know, there's, there's certain rules that come about the, by being in this particular context. Now, can you turn the lights back on? Watch your eyes. And being in this context gives us a different set of rules. It's like being in, being in a theater gives us a certain way of understanding how we can be as opposed to being in a classroom like this, or being in a church, or being in a museum. If you think, think about how those are set up, it gives you a different message about how to behave than when you're at McDonald's or at a fast food restaurant. Or if you, th if you think about restaurants, if you compare how a fast food restaurant is set up to a fine dining restaurant with the, where the lights are dimmed, there's the comfortable, the chairs are comfortable. You know, that gives us a certain degree of, a certain type of expectations about our behavior. The environment is giving us messages. And so that's, that's, you know, one kind of example of the environment giving us nonverbal communication. A second domain of nonverbal communication is our physical appearance. So it's just the way we look. So, you know, if I came up, came today dressed with this coat as opposed to a clown outfit, I would be giving you a different message about myself. Um, and that's true for all of us in terms of our appearance. It, 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 um, it is true for what we wear, the kind of glasses we choose, how we make our hair, whatever makeup we put on, um, how tall we are, um, our body sizes, all of, all of our physical appearance gives messages or gives signals about us. And so that's another type of nonverbal behavior, uh, nonverbal communication. A third domain of nonverbal communication is what I call behavioral traces. Um, you, people, researchers don't talk about this that much, but I, I, I think this is a very important domain of, of nonverbal behavior. So these refer to the inanimate objects, essentially inanimate objects that are the remnants of our decisions. So for example, how you've laid out the furniture in your, in your apartment will tell you something about the person who laid out the furniture. Um, the kind of bumper sticker that you put on your car tells, gives a message and it tells you something about the person who chose that bumper sticker. Um, so, so those kinds of inanimate objects with our, which are the results of some behavioral choices of ours also give us messages, and not only in the message of the object, but of, of the person who chose to, to use that object. So we call that, I call that behavioral traces.
And then the fourth type of domain of nonverbal communication is what is known as nonverbal behavior. So nonverbal behaviors are the dynamic, expressive movements of the body uh, that occur when most people are in interaction. They can be our faces, our gestures, they include our tone of voice, um, the way our bodies are moving, the, the way we walk, things like that. So these are the dynamic behaviors that are occur. Um, I, I think that's a separate de um, domain of nonverbal communication, although people kind of put them together when they talk about them. I, I think that nonverbal behavior is a subdomain of the larger domain of nonverbal communication. So when you think of nonverbal communication, it's really a huge domain of communication methodologies that people are using, and, and which is a very, very complex signal system. Nonverbal behaviors um, that occur in, in the expressive behaviors in interactions are one subdomain of nonverbal, the larger domain of nonverbal non communication. Now, even within the, the domain of nonverbal do, do, uh, behaviors, there are subchannels, and every researcher classifies them differently. Um, I classify them according to face, voice, and the rest of the body. Now, of course, these are not mutually or exclusive of each other because the face and the voice are part of the body, right? Um, but it's just one way of, of classifying nonverbal behaviors as a whole. So I, I think of the face, I, and I think of these three subdomains as channels. Uh, so we, I, I think of three channels of nonverbal behaviors, and I call them channels because just like channels on a TV, they can give you different messages. So just like when you turn, well, nobody changes channels on a TV like this. This is showing you how old I am, and this is a gesture that tells you about my age, but then we can forget about that. I guess we're going to do this nowadays by changing the channels. Um, but once you change a channel on a TV, you get a different message. Just, just as that's true for channels on a TV, you have channels in your body. So the face channel gives us different messages than our voice channel, which gives us different messages than our body channel. Even within those channels, there are different sub-sub-channels. So, for example, within the face, we have facial expressions, which are the expressions that we're making by movements of the muscles in their face. These are different, for example, than blinks. Uh, and this is different. these are different also than where you're looking, gaze or visual uh, attention. So there's a three different sub-channels within the facial channel. With voice, there's, there's also um, tone, pitch, intonation, speech rate, silence, pauses, uh, duration, intensity, etc., etc., etc. There are many characteristics of the voice. With the body, there's body posture, there's gait, there's gesturing. So there's many different types of um, aspects of the body as well. So even within nonverbal behavior, what I'm saying is that there are many channels and subchannels, and each of them are giving us, is giving us different signals. Some channels give us signals about our emotional states. Some channels give us emotions about our cognitions. Some channels give us emotions about our physiology. So when I look at you guys over there looking in this, I can see that everyone's so attentive and so excited about this lecture because of this great posture that everybody has. As opposed to if everybody was like this, then I know I've kind of lost everybody. So you can get that kind of information about, about a person uh, from their body. You can get specific information about very specific emotions, like I'm angry or I'm happy or I'm sad, or their general affective states. With cognitions, you can get information about the fact that they're thinking, people are concentrating, people are confused, or you can get very specific um, messages like words, like this, or this, or this, or this. These are gestures that have specific words that are associated with them. And so you can get very specific cognitions or, or very generic cognitions. All of these signals are being communicated through all of these channels, and they have multiple different functions. On one hand, they can give us messages without words. So it's very interesting, even before we were starting, you were watching me and I was watching you without the audio, or I didn't have the audio on, so I had no idea what you guys were talking about, but we, we, can, we're, we can communicate, just as people can communicate without the words through their nonverbal behaviors. So that's 
one very important function of nonverbals. Uh, another important function of nonverbals is to comment on the words. So you notice I said comment on the words, and my voice emphasized comment, and my hands went like this when I'm, I'm doing this. And, and my, my nonverbal behaviors from my voice and my gestures are in emphasizing the words. So emphasizing or illustrating or animating the words is one function of nonverbal behaviors. Nonverbal behaviors can also complement the words. Nonverbal behaviors can also substitute for the words. Nonverbal behaviors can also contradict words. So you get many different complex messages from the combinations of nonverbal behaviors and the words. So when you put all of this together in the human communication package, uh, of course we have words which are incredibly important. Um, but when you put the words together in context, within the non larger context that we're in, with the physical appearance, with all of the nonverbal behaviors, what you find is that our communication is actually occurring with, in a very complex space uh, with multiple signal systems occurring simultaneously and that we're interpreting all of that at the same time and, 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 and interacting on this in, in fractions of a second, which is kind of a very amazing thing. With regard to the words, as I think everybody knows, lang verbal language is very culture specific. So English is very specific to English speaking cultures. And as you all know, um, different dialects of English exist just as different dialects of different languages exist. The same is not true for all nonverbal behaviors. For nonverbal behaviors, some nonverbal behaviors are very culture specific, just like verbal language. So gestures happen to be very culture specific. So the ones that I did like this, or like this, or like this, they happen to be very specific to specific cultures. But then there are other cult uh, gestures from other cultures that are very specific to that culture, like this, or like this. And they only have meaning in those other cultures just as words have meaning in those other cultures. So some nonverbal behaviors are very culture specific. Some nonverbal behaviors, however, are universal across everybody. And these, and the most important ones are facial expressions of emotion. There's been research that, that has occurred for, uh, well, started with Darwin over 100 years ago, but most recently in the last 50 years that have, have proven conclusively that there's seven emotion ca categories of emotion that are displayed pan-culturally in all humans around the world, regardless of race, culture, nationality, age, sex, uh, any demographic characteristic. And so... Um, we can understand, we can communicate emotional states uh, between each other without any language through our faces. So when you think about a uni possible universal language, uh, facial expressions are the closest thing that we have to a universal language. And as I mentioned earlier, when you put all of the nonverbal behaviors together, whether they're in our gestures, our voices, our faces, the context, our appearances, and together with the words that we're using, this is a very, very complex signal system. And humans are an amazing uh, creature that can, can take advantage of all of these signal systems and put them together in a sophisticated, integrated, systematic fashion so that we can communicate with each other in a, in a coordinated fashion to achieve constructive goals. And that's really what uh, communication is all about. Um, you know, in, in other writings, I've defined the, pro the pr purpose of communication is essentially for us to share intentions with each other because it's the only by sharing intentions with each other that we can have a coordinated functioning society. And that's really the ultimate goal of, of, of all language and all communication, I think. And I think the nonverbals help us uh, do that as well as the verbals.